We turn now to the crisis in Ukraine. Tonight, explosions heard around Kyiv as Russian forces continue their assault. President Zelensky saying that at least 137 Ukrainians were killed. And more than 300 people were wounded in attacks today. The Pentagon now believes the Russian military could be closing in on the capital of Kyiv and want to, quote, decapitate the government. ABC's senior foreign correspondent Ian Pannell is on the ground there. Byron, what we've seen really over the last day is that Russian forces advancing in three directions, from the north, from the east, and also from the south, trying to push closer to the capital, Kiev, but also stepping up their assaults on other critical cities. You've really noticed a change in the mood here in the capital. People have gone from believing that this wouldn't happen to having to reckon with living in a time of war. We've seen thousands of people flee the city. I think for many people, they're now seeing families being split up, real hardship, and facing the reality that tomorrow will not look like today for now. Byron. Our thanks to Ian. Those still in Ukraine are facing difficult decisions, many choosing to stay and possibly fight, others deciding to leave. We stopped to get gas, even though we have like uh, 300 kilometers to go. Uh, I want to say I want to come back, but I don't know if we're going to come back. That's really Just have so many things, you know? We were starting a life here, at home. But now we're running. Tonight, the harrowing road out of Ukraine. Gridlock slowing down thousands as they struggle to move west, away from the Russian invasion. Many of Ukraine's 40 million citizens woke to this. Explosions and bomb sirens captured in video. Many posted on social media from inside Ukraine. 32-year-old English teacher Juan Tech woke to the phone ringing. A close friend of mine who lives in the center of Kyiv he called me with a panicking voice telling me that he heard a blast and if I heard it. And then soon after I heard another blast myself. And I woke up my wife. One here. The chaotic start to the day dramatically different from the calm of the weekend. So we're trying to figure out what to do. We're uh, almost done packing. Our bags are almost done. It's just a question of we should leave or not. They did give us alerts that uh, we there are shelters just in case if we hear the sirens, we should take cover. At least some of those shelters in city subway stations were people packed in earlier today. While explosions have sporadically rocked the capital city. Videos posted online show the hardest hit areas. The Russian military is now reportedly in control of Chernobyl, the destroyed nuclear plant. Russian special forces and a large number of helicopters landing at a military base just 20 miles from the center of the capital. In this video posted to social media, fire and gunshots as Russians and Ukrainian troops battle in the town of Sumy. The Russian troops on the border are currently outnumbered by the Ukrainian army, but it's less sophisticated or powerful. Europe has not seen an invasion of this size since World War II, and civilians have not been spared. An enormous unexploded rocket crashed through the ceiling of an apartment building in Kharkiv. In here, missile debris wedged into a damaged road. Martial law is now in effect nationwide. It's for him to get out. That's mama's bag. That's my bag. Tomislav's bag, baby's bag, and this is the car. For Juan, the risk was too much for him and his young family. It's probably better to leave than stay in Kiev just in case they do come here. As American citizens, we'll be safer outside of uh, Russian occupied Kiev if it does happen. He wants to go play, he wants to go hang out. He packed his wife, two year old son, and their grandmother into the car. Please wish us luck. Took off toward Poland. There was an explosion right over there. All the birds just uh, flew off. Whoa, that was intense. Let me take in the back roads. Figure avoid the major highways is the best thing to do right now. This is Tomislav. So the gas stations are closed, so you, uh, you can't really go to the restroom or get gas. Thank God we have our tank full. The drive extremely slow. This is how a line looks like to get gas. Bypassing long lines at the very few gas stations that are open. Hitchhikers and stranded drivers who ran out of fuel. Uh, here we are. This is the modern world. 2022, where uh, the country is under attack. 
for ridiculous, outrageous reasons. I don't know if I can share anything now anyways. I'm taking these videos right now, but the internet keeps going on and off. And for those without cars, it's a struggle to find a way out. Yulia made it to Poland by train, delayed for hours. She teared up telling us how she had to leave her mother and grandmother behind, both unable to travel. I don't know when I will come back. I don't know if she still will be alive. World leaders are facing increasing pressure to stop Vladimir Putin. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war, and now he and his country will bear the consequences. Now we see him for what he is, a blood-stained aggressor. The U.S. has troops in the region, but will not send them into direct combat. A smaller, specialized NATO response unit has been dispatched to Eastern Europe. It is a rapid response force at a high readiness level. The forces belong to individual countries, but are ready to be assembled and deployed as a, as a joint force at any time. And the U.S. and U.K. both announced another round of sanctions targeting Russia. This is going to impose severe cost on the Russian economy, both immediately and over time. We have purposefully designed these sanctions to maximize the long-term impact on Russia and to minimize the impact on the United States and our allies. They are targeting a couple of financial institutions and their ability to exchange money. I think this is uh, going to have a long-term impact. It's not going to impact Putin very much, and I don't think any of this is going to affect his decision-making. So far, many around the world want more action. Protests filling the streets from Poland to Italy in Israel. And here in the U.S. on the streets of New York. Stop Russia! Stop Russia! I'm born and raised in Ukraine, and I want to go back home to Ukraine. I don't want to go back to Russia or some republics. Hands off Ukraine! This is my civic duty to, mm -hmm. to be present at this rally. And remarkably, push back against Putin at home in Russia. Police confronting and detaining more than 1,700 protesters. I think we need to be isolating Putin and Russia. This is no longer business as usual. This is Putin upsetting all the norms that we have grown to live under, for, you know, in our entire generation. The world worries Putin won't stop. But most Ukrainians, the millions of people staying, this is now their new reality. I never thought he will go for the whole country. Like, this is the... The worst case scenario that that could happen. Roman Stepanovich has known Russian aggression his whole life, growing up in and reporting on the Eastern conflict zone. He came to Kyiv years ago and is now raising his two children with his wife in the once peaceful capital. The worst thing is is explaining it to your children, you know, just in a, in a room uh, without windows when we hear, you know, shelling and, and jets and would know like who's Jess are those. When he asks, probably I will tell him the truth, like that, you know, this is a war. We'll explain him how the war works. Roman recorded video of people lining up all around Kyiv today, from gas stations to grocery stores. He says his family is staying in Kyiv tonight, but they are taking it moment by moment. This is also your country. And you, you're a Ukrainian citizen, you know, you, you, Ukrainian national, you just go to your land. There's nowhere to go, really. All right, this is, uh, On the road as Juan and his family try to escape this war, signs of the fight are constantly visible. We're going one direction, and in the other direction, we keep seeing a lot of military, Ukrainian military personnel heading, you know, and, and their, their faces are not, they don't seem at all, um, it, it's, it's weird to explain, it's a, they, they look a bit petrified, but ready. But after driving all day with hours more to go, so many left wondering, how far will Putin go? And how long can Ukrainians hold out? Stand with Ukraine. You know, they say here, Slava Ukraina, you know, Slava Ukraina. Long live Ukraine. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.